Hey everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And um, like usual, what we've been doing in the last couple of streams is I would give you guys any kind of updates as to uh, what's going on art-wise and uh, otherwise. And I think we talked about it. Uh, Will or Rob Sinink in the chat, he can fill you guys in. I'm more than sure we talked about it. Um, but it may have been a week in between we had the official announcement that he'll be jumping on the standard as well. And if that was brought up before, cool. You guys get to find out and hear about it <laughs> even more. So, yeah. So he's going to be part of that. Um, I think, if you guys aren't following him already, uh, well, if you wanted to post your uh, Facebook account in the chat, if you could check it out, he does, he's, uh, so far it seems anyway, he's doing what I, I tried to do uh, when... I was doing full time on the standard where it's uh, as panels are completed, just tossing screenshots and all that good stuff on Facebook so you guys can check out, the, like if you guys enjoy process and stuff like that. Um, so like usual, if you guys have a comment or a question, this uh, whole hour here is for you guys. So just uh, post it in the chat. Uh, I would ask if you just put it in caps so that um, it's easier for me to check it out and uh, all that good stuff. And if you guys are watching the recorded version on uh, YouTube, uh, you can check out Will Robson's Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc., which is R-O-B-S-O-N-I-N-K. Cool. Um, today, I figured I would sneak in an hour and just do some Guildborn stuff. It's been a little while uh, since, uh, you know, doing this kind of work here. Just coming up with some more characters and designs and stuff like that. Still haven't made too much progress, if anything, on this project at all. Which is funny because I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to promote it that it's being worked on. And uh, I don't know, I think it's a little fun. Uh, there's a couple decisions I went into that. Uh, one was waiting till I actually had content finalized before I start um, promoting it and things like that. And then the other side was I know there's a lot of other guys and girls in the chat room or uh, that are contacting me or just people that make comics in general where what they like is seeing process from start to end. Um, so I, 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 I decided to go a little bit on that route. Um, and just started throwing things out just based on that. But tonight, I figure it's time to do a little bit of monsters. Do some, do some monster monsters. I've got like a crap ton of mana layers here. Um, psh, 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 psh. I guess we'll just make some more layers. Actually, I think I saw somebody had a question. Um, uh, besides. <laughs> Healing factors. Uh, cast through comic, if I'm saying that right. How do I start a new multiple page file? Um, are you still in the chat, bud? If you are, I can just show you how to quickly do that. All right. Let's see what we get. I want to see if we can get like some like goblin creatures or something like that. I'll put one like a cliff. Let's really sink that head down on him. It appears my MS five EX is acting up. The options appear. Okay, so let's just make sure I know where it's at. Make sure you're looking at the right spot. So if you go to File, New, right here, this should pop up. Um, if this isn't showing up, you might need something else turned on. And I, I apologize, I'm not sure what it is. Um, it's literally right here, just multiple pages. Click that, and then you can choose or type in how many pages and then all that stuff. Is this not showing up for you? Check out for creating work multiple using. You can switch to multiple page layout later by using. If this if this isn't here for you, apparently you can go to add page and next page in story menu. Whatever the hell that means. Okay, so story here, and then you can go to. There you go. Add pages and stuff like that. 
try try that. Just click story at the top, and down here it starts saying stuff like combine pages and all kind of wacky stuff. Maybe it'll help you there. All right, so let's think of something for these doblins or goblins or whatever the hell we're gonna call them. We'll make a creature up. Maybe we'll give them like forearm legs. Their legs look like the forearm muscles or something. The story tab isn't showing up. Okay, do you happen to have like just Mega Studio 5 installed and 5EX? Because you might be just opening up 5. I know that sounds like an obvious thing, but I know I've done that. Guildborn officially starting? I'm uh, not sure. I have to finish the standard and the role playing book, and then it's gonna. Then we're gonna try going into full full production mode on this stuff here. I would like to have uh, the first draft of the script, whoever finished, uh, sometime in February, if not at the end of February. Could be it. Yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you. It's shitty. Alright, so we're gonna have this goblin thingy doing some mumbo jumbo dance. I don't know what the hell this is. Uh, let's fix our eraser here. This is poop. Oops. Oh, cool. Cave dweller people. Skeleton face or something. Um, am I enjoying Attack on Titan? Okay, I bought the manga because I've been hearing so many cool things. And I, I remember I watched a clip on YouTube, and it was really awesome. Um, the manga I can't get into, and for one reason, the story is it's to me it's okay, and I haven't finished the first one. I think I got a little bit past halfway. It hasn't gripped me or anything, but I think, and this might sound like a pretentious or maybe a little jerky. But the art is really killing it for me. Just the style, the way the guy draws the face is just... I can't... It's its tough. I'm not enjoying reading it. Uh, there's a lot of times I'll read, especially manga, and the story isn't that hot. Or comics in general, but at least the art is there to help pull me through. I'm not feeling that at all in this book. And, and it's a shame because I know a lot of people talk about it. So what I think I might have to do is just watch the show instead. Because the show, the art style looks way better. And the, the action about like swinging around giants and stuff is pretty pretty sweet. All right, so where I'm thinking of going with this one is maybe these dudes are in caves and stuff. But I want uh, I was talking to Will actually yesterday, I believe, or maybe the day before, uh, and I was I'm concerned about doing Guildborn um, and not following it up with something with uh, more. I guess style that I'm that people are used to me drawing in like superhero, you know. Um, but I I sort of forgot the one thing I wanted to do with Gilborn was have the characters look simple and cutish, just because it, it's supposed to add, it hopefully will add like a speed uh, to the book so it doesn't take me forever to do it. But the monsters where I can spend the time to get that nice shadow and the rendering and stuff like that. Oh, the anime is better than Netflix? Okay, cool. Uh, my, okay, I'll have to check it out. 
Um, so what I'm saying with these guys is I want them to be the monsters be creepy as, as hell. Give him like little blades on his hand. All right, well, I was gonna put like a stick or something here. It's like an arrowhead, maybe. All right, now what do things have in the dark? They have antennas or something? Hmm. Ears? Would they need ears? What, what the hell lives? Like a mole rat kind of thing. They just have like giant teeth. Creepy teddy bears or something. I don't know what the hell this is. Alright. So when this starts to happen, just trying to come back to the design. Figure out why I'm getting stuck on something. And it could be just research. Or it could be, I don't know what the point of this guy is. I'm just drawing it for fun. So I got a cool kind of shape to him. Uh, I need to find a silhouette to make him really pop. And, okay, so we got a story for him. So this guy, we'll put a bunch of them down here too, kind of looking off. Uh, I do like the idea of giving them the big eyes and stuff because then we can just shadow them out so we can show like a bunch of them in the cave. Like that. Uh... But they need something vicious. What do they? What do they? What do they need? Angler fish lights. All right, we're gonna go with angler angler fish lights. <laughs> um, tips on drawing monster teeth. Look at Joe Mad. Um, uh, even Jim Lee, he actually had this really cool thing where he he talked about teeth, but he does this thing, and I mean, I like the way it starts. I don't like the way he finishes it, um, but it's pretty cool where it's, you just, just say we have like a monster smiling, and all he does is he, he'll work in like shapes like this. That would be your top row, bottom row. Here, I'll just give him a nose so you guys can see the direction he's in. He's a happy monster. And what you do here is now you just start connecting the teeth like that and what you can do is you can start like actually putting in extra shapes and stuff hey like that and then once you get your light source you can just put your um, line weights in there So you get some creepy teeth. Yeah, you can put the gums up like that too. And put the lips. Makes it even creepier. I know. Tooth to gum ratio. <laughs> okay. So let's delete this guy here. All right, we'll go back to this guy, this um, jack-o'-lantern head kind of guy. Yeah, those eyes are really making this guy real creepy. All right, I want to do this thing here. I've always wanted to try this kind of stuff where I guess we can work with the gums here. You can really start pulling this stuff back. Alright, so if he's got this giant light bulb here to track people, get a real cool shadow back there. I just want to make the behind him look a little bit more deadly because you wouldn't, maybe when you see him coming. It doesn't look that bad, but behind him is when you start seeing like blades and knives and stuff. So anything that would be behind him, we could start putting some. So now we're getting now we're getting vicious. Kind of like a, a porcupine or a hedgehog there. All right, so we got we got the. 
the rough shape going on here. You can put like a face in the absolute foreground. And we want, so, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn this into like an actual compositional drawing here. So we'll say that's the shot. And I'm going to rotate it, see if we can get some extra creep in there. There we go. That's even better. More creep. All right, so let's find out this. Gonna do one point perspective. Now uh, we'll do the rule of thirds on the gun on this one. Let's get used to doing it. So that means this guy needs to come up a bit. There will be some more adjustment. I guess we're gonna go all the way to a finish here with this one. Will he be riding a monster? Uh, yeah, we could even put a monster in there too. Uh, I was going to just put him on a giant rock, like stalagmites and stuff. Actually, you know what? We're going to change the perspective up again. We're going to have it all kind of pointed towards his face, like the rocks and stuff. We're going to put a bunch of these little minion dudes down here. Maybe have like a giant guy in the foreground, maybe. That's uh, okay. Put some more spears or something. Okay, so let's just tighten up the anatomy just a little bit and then we'll polish it up here. So, let's grab our kneadable eraser here. This face is a little more creepy too. Like a sharp point. So one thing I've been finding too, especially in animation, they talk about this, is uh, being very aware of the shapes you're using. Um, so the more round, softer shapes start to usually be for heroes or happy people. Or if it's a bad guy, they might be like a, somebody that thinks a lot, so they'll have like the big round head. Um, but with these guys, I would like maybe the front to be more round, but as we get further back, it's more triangular and sharp. I'm going to sink those eyes in. So here we'll kind of do that. Same thing we just did earlier for the teeth. Estimated amount of pages for Guildborn. Uh, I'm hoping for at least 120 to 250 around there. I want it to be like manga sized, so graphic novel for sure. those giant feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
What's that? If there's subterranean, the eyes might not be set in. Um, you're yeah, you're probably right. Probably makes sense, right? They need to get as much light as they can. So if they need as much light as they can, they probably pop out. All right, we're gonna go with that route then. And actually, what we should. All right, you know what? Appreciate that feedback. We're gonna change the eyes up totally here. We're just gonna keep them black. Looks more creepy, but um, you know, if we need to get as much light as we can, they should probably be huge. Now they're starting to look a little insectish. Uh, I don't want insects. Right, so texture the back a little bit here. It's funny, I don't want to go insect with this, but the more <laughs> I just keep tightening it and adding the detail, it's starting to look that way. And I don't want to fight it. Uh, again, the purpose of this is just to have, trying to populate the world with potential minions that could spark story ideas or just, you know, the bad guys that might populate the world for the heroes to kind of fight. Shark eyes. <laughs> uh, new art book? Uh, eventually. Sure, why not? Probably do it a little differently this time if I can, as opposed to how we did it last time. Um, all right, what's 100%? This is 100%, so it's still a pretty big file here. All right, so what we'll do is we got that. Let's turn it. Do we want to turn it blue? I'll right, we'll see how it goes. Make a new layer. change it to a black for a pencil. It starts to look like ink too. Alright, so let's try something here. I'm going to start I'm going to start worrying about my light source immediately being in front of us. And so I'm going to start rendering as we go. Just want to build up values and shapes. Because the further we go back, is where all the detail is. Get a little better of a jaw. I'll just add a little bit of a. You know what? I don't know. Now he's starting to kind of look fun to me. So, the <laughs> I was very. You guys heard me talking about the insect part. I'm like, no, no, don't do that. But now we're I'm, I'm starting to get some story ideas in my head of, like, the, the insect queen sending her little minions out to do whatever. And I want them to be vicious, but I don't want them to look... Like... I don't know if you guys feel like this. You can sometimes see designs and think of it like a video game or a movie where just the way the character is designed it's like oh well that's that's the boss or that's the last bad guy or you know you can tell usually who's like the lower level bad guy like the little minion and who's the the big bad and uh, one thing that will definitely tell that stuff apart especially in this uh, thing like this is the teeth I'm I'm trying to add a little bit more round shape to it, even though it looks like a hot mess. So that when we do the the you know the queen version, all those teeth would be like this, you know, like they'd be fangs. And that would probably look more deadly. And usually, what looks more deadly reads better as the the uh, 
the big bad. I'm just gonna add a little bit of debris kind of flying around. I can see these guys making like a ticking sound, like a tick 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 tick. As our main characters are setting up camp somewhere next to like a hole in the ground, like an ant hole or something. They don't notice how big that hole is and these guys come out. So that's going to be the light source, so let's put that there. Sometimes this stuff's pretty hard to do when you're adding like the reflection of things. Sometimes it just doesn't work, sometimes it just kills a whole image. So I'm going to try this carving out like little white shapes and if this doesn't work then I'll fill the whole thing black and then just change my pencil here to white and then draw over it that gives it like a, a different effect looks pretty cool let's turn that layer off So here we're going to go to white. I'm just going to add just some more reflective detail there. Uh. <laughs> uh, it's been actually snowing a little bit, not too, too bad. But the, the cold, it's like, it's like almost frigid at times, man. It's Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. I know it's worse in other places, so there's... Can't complain. Can't complain. All right, let's give him like a little pattern up here. Break up his head a little bit, just give it some, some more texture to it. Alright, now we need to just make sure these guys look like meanies. So let's add like a little bit of carapace or whatever the hell it's called that insects have. And this will help when we need to show emotion. So when one of these things gets gutted, we can see it better. Now I'm not sure how I feel about this. Uh, what's that? Are you still using those cloth gloves when you draw? Yep, still using them. And Banff has asked, so is this part of Guildborn or Squirrel God? Uh, this is Guildborn. Squirrel God is on a hiatus. Might get to it after this. Um, what I'm thinking, though, is after Guildborn... And, and this is like a year or two out, so there's still tons of time to change all this, but uh, I've been, anybody that's been following me on Facebook lately, you've been seeing, I've been posting all this like synthesized retro <laughs> 80s soundtrack bands, and if you're here at the beginning of the stream, I was playing some of that stuff, and it always sounds like theme music or background music to like those action flicks and stuff, but I really want to do a story about that like that kind of thing you know like I don't know the specifics but just for like an example you know like that cyborg cop 
and he's been sent back in time to prevent the apocalypse and it's 1998 you know like that kind of shit and the main character is probably like a robot or something a mix between Terminator and Robocop and he's got the mullet and the sunglasses and all that kind of stuff it just seems like a ridiculous thing and it's, I don't know I just want to create something in there uh, if it'll be a full blown graphic novel or, or just an idea that I need to just flesh out I'm not sure um, and then from there I might come back and do like the second part of Guildborn or or jumping back into Squirrel God So we'll see. There's still tons of stuff. And then there's also that other one. Uh, what was it? God Slayer. That's the other story that I still want to tell, too. That one's... Uh, that one I already have a little bit of work done for it. But I don't know when I'll ever be able to get to God Slayer. Because some of the things I'm going in there, it's I, I would like the story to be a little bit better. But I don't want to put it in the back burner to the point where it's like... I gotta wait till it's perfect, you know. Uh, but there's, uh, it just needs a little bit of love. That's all. Uh, hey, Mike, what's that? Since you're talking about digitized old school, you should try this. All right, let's see if this Linky Poo works. Copy it. All right, let's see that link. Zombies ate my name. <laughs> I remember that game. I'll have to watch it after the stream. Uh, but I wanted to say again, just for the people that are coming in a little bit later, uh, that the live streams are for you guys and girls, so if you guys have any drawing comments or questions or anything, or maybe anything that I might be able to help you with, uh, by all means, just uh, leave it in the chat. Just uh, If you got a question, just leave it in capitals. That way I can see it and address it faster for you. And if you guys are watching on YouTube and you can't make it to these live streams, uh, send me a message over YouTube. I would prefer you send me an email. Uh, just my name, Jonathan underscore A underscore Rector at hotmail.com and ask it there and I'll do my best to tackle it on an episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you think think about how your ideas might fit as a video game or a movie property? Uh, no, not really. Uh, the way I like to look at it is l if any of this stuff ever turned into anything, uh, that'd be great, but it needs to be a, a comic book first. Uh, at least in my mind. Uh, right now, they're just sketches, right? Like, there's there's no story here. This is just... This is literally just concepting and um, concepting and idea generation and illustration. Nothing more. I don't know if I could sell this kind of stuff. Not that I'm really looking forward to it right now. But I'm not one of those guys that wants to make a comic book in hopes of it turning into a movie. I, I'm I'm a big advocate against that stuff. I don't think that's. I think that's slapping the medium in the face. Uh, what I would rather people do is give comics or anything else. If I, like, I doubt this would ever happen. But I don't even think it's ever happened. But somebody saying like they want to create the movie first so that they can write the book, right? Like that doesn't really make too much sense. But I just wish people would. I don't know what it is with comics. I think I I know of at least one person in this chat room that's had this happen where it's uh, and myself. Or I don't know what it is, but it's like they want to make the comic so that they can try to sell the comic to make the movie or the TV show and I just don't I don't get it it's again slapping the medium in the face it deserves better comics are better than that and saying all that I mean if that's what you would like to do uh, you know wish you all the 
wish you all the luck, but I don't know. I think when you start to treat certain mediums with uh, not just respect, but you know, there's tons of people that like comics. You know, they actually like, com and there's a lot of people that prefer comics over things. And I'm not going to get into the debate of what entertainment media is better than the other. Um, they all offer their own pros and cons, but you know, if you're if you're just going to make a comic because it's cheaper to get the whole thing conceptualized and tell your story because it costs more money to make your movie a B movie and then try to pitch that or something. I don't know. That's a little, there's gotta be some business reason for that, that I just, I'm not thinking of. I just don't, honestly, I just don't care to be honest with you. I love comics. So I'd rather tell my stories in comics. And if it were to turn into a show or a movie, cool. Let's talk about it then. But it needs to be created first. Right now, it's just it's just a bunch of ideas, and it's doing nothing for <laughs> it's doing nothing for nobody. Um, makes me antsy because I just want to get this stuff done. Um, I think a lot of us, especially if you're into making your own stuff, you want to have like a library of your own kind of work. You know, like I like the idea of people being able to go into the comic book store and grab a comic that I made. Not if I ever worked for Marvel or DC, that'd be great. But again, we've I've talked about this to death. I I I'd rather people would go into comic book stores to pick up my stuff as opposed to stuff I did for somebody else. And that's not to say that I wouldn't work for these people. Um, it's just I'd rather you know people go in and be like, oh yeah, let's go to Chapters or wherever Amazon and stuff, and let's just flip through Guildborn and or whatever and see if it's your thing. And if it is, give it a try maybe Squirtle God, stuff like that, you know, and I had that article that I posted on my website about how I wish I was more, I, I was uh, more like Doug Tenaple, and that guy's, I don't know about now, but at least for the last few years, he's been able to hammer out, hammer out at least one graphic novel, if not two a year, that's, that's what I'm talking about, that's, that's what I would like to be able to do, just tell that many stories, you know, give, give a, a reason for my sketchbooks and my brain to just let it disappear and start bringing some of these things uh, to ev to other people. That's that's some cool stuff to me, anyway. I, you know, everybody's in the comics for their own reason, and I think they're all valid. Even if <laughs> even if your reason is just to get a comic done so that it could be a movie, it's a valid reason. I don't agree with that, but at the end of the day, if people are making more comics, I can't complain. Oh yeah, here we go. Tons of questions. Uh, let me just zoom up and go. Uh, and I apologize if I put you guys' names. That's just how I do it. Uh, Lilac. John, how much effort or attention do you put on speed when it comes to your drawing process? Hmm. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. And I'm not very disciplined in that. I wish I was better. Um, I think... Well, I know, based on myself, the more that I draw, uh, and the longer that I draw, you know, I've been doing this for a long time now, that I can draw things faster than I was before. Uh, I'm able to see things differently. I don't have to worry about going, okay, I need this per anatomy to be perfect all the time, because I know once I go into, like, let's say this stage, when I get into the detail, I can fix things and stuff like that. So, um... I'm not really conscious of it. The one thing that I am definitely trying to get better at, and it's probably one of my uh, worst qualities, is deadlines. Is being able to, I don't want to say just stick to a deadline, but actually go, okay, a comic page takes me X amount of hours, and then schedule around that. Um, because sometimes I, I would think like a page won't take that long because it's just six panels of people talking. And it's literally just heads. There's nothing. There's no cool perspective or nothing on it, and it ends up taking me 20 hours. You know. So there, there's a lot of things that factor in that stuff, like focus and you know, do you even want to do this stuff? All that stuff. But I wish I had a better answer for you. I think everybody's a little bit different. I know Will. He's very good at scheduling. I don't know how well he actually goes by it. I know he needs to do it because of the amount of work he has. Um, but, uh, you know, I've gone through a lot of different scheduling procedures, like writing down, okay, well, this is the plan that I need to follow, and I've yet to really sit on one that's 
giving me the results that I want, uh, which leads me to believe that it's not necessarily the tool that I'm using, uh, it's, it's me. So I just need to figure out what it is um, that I can do to get better. Or, yeah, get better and faster. Hopefully that answered your question there. Um, uh, Rump is asking, can the comic you made for 24-hour comic, Dave? Uh, yeah, that was like two years ago. No, I never finished it. Um, if you guys want, just let me know in the chat if you guys are even interested. I think I still have it on this computer. I can open it up and show you what uh, I did two years ago on 24-hour comic book day. I actually liked where the story was going to the point where I rewrote the script and started drawing it over again. I think I got one or two pages in. Uh, that story is called Drudge, and I'd still like to do that one too. That one's a shorter. St that one's only supposed to be 22 pages or 24 pa pages, sorry. But I'd rather give it a little bit more room to expand in places. But you know. That's the beauty of doing this stuff. You just always have a bunch of ideas. <laughs> uh, Ian is asking, that's what happens when we move studios by... Oh, sorry, what? That's what happens when movie studios buy out the publishers. Right. And artist is... Or, uh, Mike is asking, I've, I have a hard time using pure blacks as shadows, yet I paint digitally. Really, any thoughts on how I should approach the inking process in regards to shadows versus feathering and when to use them? Uh, oh, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see if I can. Okay. Let me get Mega Studio here for some reason. It doesn't want to work. Alright, so we're going to put a little hiatus on this little creature guy. Uh, it served my purpose. The illustration is not done, but that's okay. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, all of this stuff, it looks like a jumbled mess, but it's just a, co a combination of sketches you guys have seen. Um, it's like a sketchbook for myself to just come in here and throw things in there for Guildborn so that I can flip through uh, whenever and you know figure that out. This stuff here is still a problem. I'm trying to figure out how to get the characters at different angles for their faces and stuff. But, uh, okay, so we're going to wrap that up. So let me just address this one question. Okay, so I'm going to do two things here real quickly just to show you and hopefully help you understand, at least my understanding of it anyway, um, when you should use shadows and when you should use um, rendering or feathering, some people like to call it. Uh, so what we'll do is we will draw something very simple. What could, what could we have that would have a cash out? Okay, we're going to do a... Shift still work? No. Okay. So we got the horizon, and we're going to draw a cylinder. Real tacky cylinder. Uh, so let me make sure. Just change the erasers here. Okay. So we're going to have that, and what we'll do, just bear with me. I know nobody wants to really go over this stuff, but just, just do it. So here's the sun. It's a scorcher. Look at that, just melting. All right, so really quickly, all you ever need to worry about is shadow. Rendering is the gray or the fading between shadow and light. And honestly, it's also used just to make your stuff look cool. Don't just throw it in there for no reason. Uh, there's rules to it. I'm not going to get into that right now because there's no time. But definitely look into it. It's something that everybody should be using and be aware of. That way you can choose how much of it you want to use, but definitely shading. If you're not going to throw like blacks in your work, the same rule applies for line weights. So if you don't know what line weights are, here's the main light source is the sun. Captain, you know, melt face. He's just blasting rays of what? Okay. So any light that's opposing, any line that's opposing Captain melt face over there, is darker okay so that means this whole side is darker and a little bit underneath there and a little bit underneath there okay and you're done you can just walk away you don't have to worry about throwing in your shadows but if you want to go to the next level and add your shadows all right go ahead now you know because of the line weights that you've already established putting your shadows in are, is much easier okay now the next thing is what's called a cast shadow it's this object affects how light is hit on the ground or the object beneath it so you if you want some people they like to draw like I don't know weird shapes like this so they can visualize it uh, I'm just gonna wing it here so we're gonna say it's casting it this way and the cast shadows are pure black as well but eventually they start to do this action they start to fade 
Okay, so if you think of all that fading as rendering, you're you're good, you're gold. The only other rule that applies here when you're doing rendering, and that's why I wanted to use a cylinder, is this is a shape that is curved like this. Okay, so your rendering has to follow that. Your rendering should also be heaviest and darkest the further away it gets from the light source. So to make it easier for myself, I like to oh, this isn't gonna work with this pencil. Start where it's heaviest first, and then start working my way up. I'm not going to put too much. We're just going to go nice and simple. So there you go. So you have that. That's basically um, how rendering works. It's to wrap form. It's to show form. It's to show volume. It's to show the difference between this piece of paper that we draw on. That <laughs> looks like a stone. <sighs> piece of paper. There we go. Our eyes have to turn this 2D thing into, you know, like, okay, here's a square, cool. But, like, as soon as you start adding perspective to it, now it's popping off there. And then when you start adding lighting on there, you're like, holy hell. Like, it all works. So, that, uh, that hopefully, was wondering the most... Okay, I'll, I'll reread that question, but hopefully that helped you out there. So, let's see if we can use it on something different. Um, something not complicated, but kind of complicated. Uh, what do we got? I don't want to do a face because it's. We'll just do a face. Oops. Which one under here? And we give Captain Nose here. All right. So let me just draw some quick lines here. Bear with me here. Butt chin, because butt chins are cool. All right, so let's turn the layer off there. Ooh, look at how horror that looks now. <laughs> okay, so not everybody's beautiful. Relax. All right, so we'll we will do. Um, we'll put the light source here. Okay, so what I wanted to show you real quickly was let's make another layer. This is for people who like to digitally paint. Like uh, I, I apologize, I don't remember your name. This is how I used to do this too, and I would recommend people that have Photoshop if you're trying to learn how to do shading. This might be what's easier for you. Have your line line weight or your line art, okay? Then put your line weights in there. You already know you don't need to worry about your grays just yet, okay? So line weights are any line that's opposing the light. So we're going to go all the way under here. All this stuff is not hit by light. No light. La 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 la. No light. No light. No light. No light. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of light. No light there. Yeah, it's giving Adam apple. Adam's apple. No light there. There's no light underneath there. There's no light under the under there. Under there. Cool. Okay. So now you can walk away. Your line weights are done. Uh, instantly, it already looks like it's working. So let's grab a. This is Mega Studio Five, so I haven't really messed around with the color too much. So uh, oil paint. I don't know. Let's try it. Let me just see if we, how gray looks. All right, that works. So what you do is, again, just think about your volume, except instead of, think of it like your whole canvas is already gray, as if you were painting, right? Paint, 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 painty paint. And go a little darker, and now it's just start to paint in kind of quickly where your, your light is, okay? Okay, why can't it go darker? It's real life. So I'm just going to just go light. I'm not worrying about going too too much with uh, like a sharp line. I just want some cast shadows in there, get his cheekies. Maybe, you know, we'll even have a shadow for the ear like that. Okay, so once you have that, now go over it. Now you know where your, your shadows should be, right? Your shadows are done. You can see it now. And so what you do is now it's up to you to determine, like, do you want to cover all this black? Sure, let's just see how it works, okay? So... 
what you're doing is you're just carving out those shapes and you're going to fill it with a paint bucket tool black okay when it's done so this takes some practice uh, I know I wouldn't recommend doing this for people that are just learning shadows at work in general um, but it is a fun little experiment if you're comfortable with this stuff I'm just going to put some X's here so I remember what's going black. And you can probably tell there's definitely some, some shading style that I'm throwing in here like that, like that triangle for underneath the cheekbone. Even though the color I have, that gray that I have in there is pretty much, you know, it, it's already told me that it wouldn't work that way. All right, so we're going to have that. Let me just turn all that off and we're just going to grab, let's make sure I don't feel anything else. There, okay, so where's our paint bucket? Right there. Let's see if this works. Ugh. It's putting that white halo around everything. Ooh. So you can see right away, just by, like, as long as you can understand shading generally, then you should be okay. So from, like, what you would do now, is if you absolutely had to, you can put the layer on underneath, and you still didn't cover all the areas of shadow, right? But you can still see where things should be. So now you can do the rendering. So anything again that's furthest away from the light will get the heaviest rendering. Like there. Uh, and this is honestly where I would start to kind of do a little bit more style, putting it in around where the lips would be because it looks cool. But it does, there's a lot of folds happening right there in your, in your mouth, right? Um, and like one of the big ones that you can do is right here on the head. So it's this stuff right here is like furthest away from us. Don't go all the way like that. It's, it starts to look a little ridiculous. There you go. A little round. Maybe we'll put like a rendering on the other side of it like that. Maybe give him some eyeballs. I think he deserves them. And here, uh, you know, there's some, some things that are happening there that I'm not really telling you guys about. But So that would basically be it. That would be your head. So, I mean, maybe that helped you out. I don't know. Oh, and then real quick, because I just saw you say something about bounce light. You could have a secondary light source popping up here, which would be like the rim light from down. Let's say it's underneath him, so underneath his chin. So now that this is the beauty about working digital, too, is you can just go in there with white and just start carving out where the that bounce light would be, you know? It'd give you a real cool effect. Like if this guy was maybe outside in New York or something. I don't know why it's New York. Everything's New York. It might have a little bit up here. So, see? You can just quickly start doing stuff like that. Okay, so what do we got here? We got about three minutes left. So if you got any questions, just jam them in. Please put it in capitals so I can see it. Then we're good to go. Um, care to that for anything? Sorry. For anything, weather and illustration. Okay, you already asked that one. Uh, thick to thin distribution. Yeah, okay. Uh, Rempa. John, have you ever thought of making a uh, Patreon? Patreon? Am I saying that right? I don't know what that is. Sorry. I guess it's just a little difficult to determine when to use a pure black to feather fade into light versus a feather fade in the middle of the light source bounce light. Um, one thing I would recommend, and this is a personal thing, and this is the beauty of like illustration comics, what you just saw me do there is this bounce light, I'll never render that. Like, I... <laughs> I, I won't start going into like that. It does look cool, but I try to keep it like I, that might be a little bit of a lie. I might do it for a style effect here and there, but keeping it simple actually helps a lot. All this like dot stuff that you might throw in here to like help render into the chin. Like, okay, so we're going to have the chin coming up there. Like, it looks cool. You just have to find out the style that you like, that you want your art to look, you know? Some people like that. Some people, some people don't. Yeah, if you can give me an example, that'd be that would help big time. Maybe his ears casting a huge shadow too. Let's 
turn him into a superhero. Okay, well, I guess that's it for tonight. So I want to say thank you to everybody that stopped by. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself. Hopefully I helped you guys out. And uh, you guys always make the time fly, so I appreciate it. And again, if you had a comment or a question uh, that you'd like me to address on the show, just feel free to email me at Jonathan underscore A underscore Rector at Hotmail.com or just go to my website, JonathanRector.com. And on the right there, there's ways to contact me. I really should add one for my email, so just bear with me on that one. And, um, yeah, shoot me an email there, and then I'll get back to you. Uh, just real quick, uh, Michael is asking, have you ever been, have, have I been studying anybody's stuff as of late? Um, the only real, not, not as much as I'd like to. Um, I would say I was looking at Capullo's new Batman stuff for a little while, and what I'm getting into now is more of studying story but studying composition and how to tell a cleaner story with what I have um, I've, I've, I've asked you guys to check out a hundred bullets uh, that's uh, Eduardo Rizzo his artwork is phenomenal whether you like the simple style or not it doesn't matter the way he tells a story with his art is where I want to go next with my stuff so I, it's not necessarily looking at people to get my the, the flashy style side better. I'm, I'm done with that for now. I will go back to it for sure. I, that'll never go away. But at this point, I, I just want to tell cleaner, clearer stories. And uh, I need to start looking at composition. Uh, so a book I just picked up that I would highly recommend is um, Framed Ink, which has been absolutely amazing. It's stuff that I know, but the way that he brings it up and talks about it uh it's just game changing stuff and i was talking to will last night i believe it was and just or the night before and what i was noticing myself doing with storyboards not storyboards sorry uh, thumbnails was i could tell i was thinking on another level whether or not people get into it that doesn't matter for me i felt growth so definitely check that stuff out if you guys are looking to uh, tighten up your story and stuff like that but anyway Take care, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll see you next Wednesday.